relationship with Tamar and now we're back on Joseph who requires one quarter of the uh, volume of Genesis and uh, as we remember Joseph uh, despised by his brothers was sold into slavery the Ishmaelites uh, took him down to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar's house as a slave uh, but God in chapter verse 39 verse 1 has still has his eye on Joseph and uh, he blesses him he causes him to prosper as a result Potiphar prospers and he recognizes that Joseph is prospering because of God puts him in charge of everything and Joseph is doing quite well when uh, he is uh, found to be in favor of Potiphar's wife Potiphar's wife looked at him with desire now we find out that Joseph was a, a handsome man and uh, Potiphar's wife having this fleshly desire for Joseph uh, wants her wants him to lie with her and uh, Joseph refuses he says uh, no my master has uh, entrusted everything to me except his wife and uh, he says, I'll not do such an evil thing, and I'll certainly not sin against my God. But in verse 10, there's a words that really bother you, but you know it's true. And that is that she was persistent day after day. She continued to come on to Joseph, to entice him. Uh, to seduce him to do whatever she could and she waited until one day when there were no men servants in the house Joseph came in she grabbed him by his clothes and said come lie with me and Joseph uh, was absolutely not going to have any part of that and he fled out of the house leaving behind the clothes that she had in her clutch now two things happen here I believe to Potiphar's wife number one is she's been rejected and that's a terrible feeling to be rejected and the other thing is that she's going to lie because she doesn't want to look bad and so she calls the men servants back into the house she says that uh, Joseph made advances to her wanted to lie with her and she screamed and when she screamed it frightened Joseph and he ran out of the house when Potiphar got home she retold the same lie about Joseph and unfortunately Potiphar believed him believed her and uh, we know that didn't work out well for Joseph but uh, we're going to take up that tomorrow but there are some applications you know I believe that God's Word illustrates all of his truths all of his teachings and all of his principles so let's take a look at five of those the first one is it doesn't matter what your position in life is. At this point, Joseph was no more than a slave. He had been sold for the price of a slave, and yet God had blessed him. God can bless and prosper anyone. You don't have to be born into a wealthy home. Uh, you don't have to have any special traits or characteristics. God can make you into whatever he wants to make you. Secondly, others will see God working in and through your life. I believe that's just as true today as it was during the day of Joseph. You see, people will see God working in and through. They'll know you by the fruits that you bear. And uh, certainly, people around us will see God working in our lives. Thirdly, integrity and mor morality is a very great lifestyle of a Christian. A Christian should have a life of integrity and morality. Fourthly, uh, sin is persistent and this world that we live in is a sinful place and it's persistent it's constantly coming at us day after day after day just as Potiphar's wife came after Joseph and we must resist even if it means fleeing temptation we must resist and finally if you've ever been around my ministry for any length of time, you've heard me quote John 16, 33, because it's such a powerfully true verse, particularly in this world that's getting worse and worse. 
and I've read ahead, it doesn't get any better. And that is, in the world you'll have tribulation, in the world you'll have trouble. But Jesus was speaking and he didn't stop there. He said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In the end, we win. But God doesn't immune us from trouble and problems no more than he immune Joseph from troubles and problems. We find Joseph went from Potiphar's house and all of the wealth and all of the authority that he had to jail. God never said it was going to be easy for Christians. He just said he'd be there with us and see us through it. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.